Good morning. Welcome to Sunday worship today and I do hope you're keeping well. We're worshipping online here but we're also worshipping in person at St Mary's. But um, wherever we are, uh, we're a united community worshipping together in love and faith of Jesus. So let's begin the service by lighting our candle to remind us that we meet together in the presence of Jesus Christ, light of the world. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. The collect for today. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now Michael is going to bring us the Bible reading for today. The reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 1 to 16, the parable of the workers in the vineyard. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long, doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go to work in my vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So, the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Isn't this so true of our human reaction? We don't like it when we don't get what we think we deserve or what's our right. And this parable isn't really about the, the labourers in the vineyard, it's about God and his grace and generosity to everyone. If we receive from God what we really deserve, then I suspect most of us would be in a very sorry state indeed. The first labourers who'd worked for the full day, they hadn't been swindled. They got what they'd agreed to. They were just miffed. Miffed that the landowner had it in his heart to be so generous and gracious to everybody who worked for him that day. And God blesses in the same way. He blesses everyone. And he calls us to go and bless others too to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And what struck me really when I read through this parable um, was about the outcome at the end of it. If we imagine the, um, the scene where the workers have gathered together as a group to be paid at the end of the day. 
So those that have been blessed for a full day's work, even though they'd only done an hour or two, just imagine their reaction. What might they have felt like? Well, I, I'm imagining them being um, su really surprised, um, delighted. I can sort of hear a lot of whooping going on. Um, really joyful scene. Um, they were probably incredibly inspired and encouraged by this act of generosity from their master. And I think that they would have felt so blessed that they would have just wanted to go and bless others. Because I believe that's how God works. Well, by blessing us, there's something that happens that goes on in our heart. And we just can't help ourselves but go and bless others. We just feel so much we want to do that. Now, if their co-workers um, had rejoiced with them and been gracious enough to recognize this blessing, what a powerful force for good that would have been. We've got the, the really happy uh, people who've just felt so blessed, and then we've got the other ones who work for the full day, um, had the same amount of money, but had it in their heart to be gracious and to rejoice with the ones who had been, had been blessed. And just imagine now that whole group combined together, how God would have worked through them. They would have gone off, wouldn't they? Um, rejoicing, sharing what they had, blessing others, telling everybody about their loving, generous and gracious master. And people, I think, would have said, wow, he sounds amazing. Can I come to that vineyard? Can I come and work there? Can I be, can I come and meet your master? I want to know more about someone who is so gracious and generous. But instead what happens, the co-workers who weren't blessed, even though they hadn't been swindled, they'd got what they'd asked for, um, they just pour cold water on the whole thing. They grumble and criticise, imagine them being quite resentful, a few snide remarks, um, it just alters the whole dynamics of the situation, doesn't it? It feels as though everything's been crushed. And what effect would that have had on those workers who had been blessed? Well, they might have been able to shrug it off, but I suspect as well there would have been some who would have been upset, disappointed that their fellow workers couldn't be happy for them. They might have even felt guilty but for sure, I think, the whole atmosphere would have changed. There would have been this dampening down of the spirit at work. And what an opportunity lost. There wouldn't have been that same sense, even with those who had been blessed, of, of going out and sharing and blessing others. God is generous in giving himself and his love to us. And our relationship with God is not about um, what we deserve or rewards or anything like that. There's nothing we can do because Jesus has done it all for us on the cross. So our relationship with God is about the grace and generosity on his part. And as he blesses us, he calls us through faith in Jesus to go and bless others too. And to go and be gracious and generous because through faith in Jesus, that's what really touches hearts and makes people think, yes, I want to go and meet that person, Jesus, too. Now we come to our time of confession when we say sorry to God. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. 
May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our hymn that Rob's going to play for us. Thine be the glory. Debbie is going to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, the response, which will appear on the screen, is help us and be gracious to us. We pray for Christians in areas where they are oppressed, for those who face cynicism at home or at work, for all who are afraid to confess their faith, we remember those seeking to spread the gospel in non-Christian areas. Lord, in your mercy, help us and be gracious to us. At this difficult time, help all employers and bless them with a spirit of fairness and grace. We pray for all who are without work or on low incomes, for all who cannot get work through prejudice, disability, illness or other reasons. May all who prosper be generous and willing to share with the needy. We pray for all relief organisations. Lord, in your mercy, help us and be gracious to us. We pray especially at this time for all those affected directly by COVID-19. We pray for healing for all those who are ill and for strength for all those working in care homes or hospitals and trying to keep vulnerable people safe. We also pray for staff and pupils and students in schools, colleges and universities as they cope with different ways of working. Give us all patience to accept increased restrictions if necessary. Lord, in your mercy, help us and be gracious to us. 
we give thanks for all who have been faithful labourers in your harvest. May we, with them, rejoice in your love and generosity, in your everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, help us and be gracious to us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. So now the notices. Um, we are meeting online and in person every Sunday at 10.15. Um, please look at the church newsletter that's being emailed out and posted out to everybody for all the details of how to log on to um, our online services and on the Zoom events. And it would be great to see you in one or other of those places, both services at 10.15. If you come to St Mary's, please do wear a face covering. Tomorrow, the 21st of September, is a PCC meeting in St Mary's at half past seven. Again, please wear the face covering. The following day, the 22nd, um, we're having a day of fasting during the day, um, really praying just for God's uh, direction and spirit to guide us in all that we're doing in these parishes. And that will be followed in the evening by a prayer meeting on Zoom at seven o'clock. And if after your um, day of prayer, you feel you have a, a word from um, God or a piece of scripture that comes to mind or um, a dream or anything really, anything that you feel is from God, do please um, let Derek know, email or phone, um, before the evening prayer meeting so that we can just collect uh, what we feel God is saying to us and pray about that. Churches continue to be open. Um, please see the details of the times on the slide. And finally, do keep in touch. We always want to hear from you and um, are doing our best to keep in touch with you. So please contact us. And now the final prayer before the blessing. Lord, teach us to live in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Let us not be intimidated by opposition or criticism. Keep us firm in the faith you have set before us. Through Jesus Christ, who has triumphed and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit for ever and ever. Amen. And a blessing from the Northumbrian community. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Yes.
Wow.